right, everybody, welcome to another episode of UX Pathways, and I have Jared Spool. Jared, how are you today? I'm I'm good. How are you? So far, so good. I appreciate you taking time out and sharing your perspective. And just curious, what is your current role in, I guess, in this user experience field? <laughs> Well, I, I, uh, technically, I'm a maker of awesomeness at Center Center. Um, that's my job. Um, uh, I uh, do my best to, to talk about UX, uh, particularly strategy around user experience uh, for folks who are looking to uh, have their organizations deliver better design products and services. So that's that's what I do every day. Uh, it sounds like you're doing a lot because I feel like underneath that layer, there's probably many other layers. And we'll get into that a little bit deeper here, but just curious, I mean, we talk about user experience. How did you end up doing what you're doing now? Um, well, I, I to, for the most part, uh, uh, I I just was curious about um, why some organizations seem to be good at putting out products and services that people love and really can use and and you know seem to do well by those those folks and why many organizations struggle at it so i've been spending a lot of time over the last few decades uh diving into what makes one organization different than another and what is it about the way they work that that gets to that point so my my work is all around strategy and how do we um, help these organizations put together a strategy that's more likely to succeed than what they have today. And so that's, that's where I, I focus. And uh, for the most part, you know, it works. It's interesting. So why some are better than others? And I know economy, economy of experience comes up quite often. I've heard that mentioned and so what you're saying though the, the economy of experience i'm not i'm not sure what you what you mean by that sure i guess what i'm getting at is your you know your i guess business or what you've been focusing on for the last you know, i guess few decades has been around determining why some organizations i guess deliver products better than others and right. are, are you are you bubbling that up to that it it is the user experience or is there is the more into that that how you you came to that conclusion? Well, at some level, user experience is is the differentiator uh, because at you you can offer. Um, you can offer things that have equivalent functionality. You know, take cars, right? There are there are low end cars that are very inexpensive, and there are high end cars that are wicked expensive. And and uh, why would someone pay for anything that isn't just the lowest car that gets you to where to go? And there's something about the car. There's something about the experience of the car. It's not. It's Pro, it, you know, it might be the quality, but in this day and age, car quality is pretty standard. I mean, you can drive it off the show floor and it drives and it does what it's supposed to do. Um, so the reliability, the maintainability, those things aren't the, the quality elements. They used to be. I mean, it used to be that, that you, the, the state I live in, Massachusetts, has a lemon law which prevents you you know a car dealer from selling you a car that's a lemon it protects you against that but most people never have to interact with that law because they don't get lemons anymore when that law was put into place it was it was a big deal but not anymore because you know cars come with 
50,000 mile warranties and, and they, they, they work. So it's not the quality of the product that uh, makes any amount of difference really. Uh, so why do people pay all that extra money? And at some level, it's the experience they have in it, whether the experience is that they perceive it to be a, a quieter, more comfortable ride, or they, 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 they ha has features that they want to have, uh, or it, it represents a status for them in the world that they can afford this fancier car, or maybe if you know the underlying power system is is something that makes them feel good about you know not eating away at the carbon footprint, you know wh whatever it is, uh, uh, there's 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 something that that gets them to do that, and and all of that's experiential. Right. That 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 is part of the experience of of being the car owner. And so we have to understand all that. We have to understand why will people pay more money for, a, in their mind, a better experience? Why will somebody go to a fancy restaurant when there is an inexpensive restaurant, you know, next door that there, there's. Or why will they go to an inexpensive restaurant and think it's the best meal of their life, right? I mean, what, what is it about that? And the more we understand those experiences and more we understand how to pick out the experiences that we as a team want to deliver to our users and our customers, the more we're gonna be able to um, uh, deliver on that promise. Does that make sense? It does. So it sounds like this sense of curiosity is driving what you do. And then you're using that as well to enable others to see the value of doing that. Exactly. Yeah. I've, I've always been fascinated by this notion that, that uh, people react differently to different stimuli. And what is what is it about the stimuli of a of a great user experience that gets people to react the way that they do what is it what is it about a poor user experience that gets them to react the way they do so that's that's uh that that's where i go with this yeah and that's fascinating because that just goes into i guess my next question which is around you know, what does it take for someone to you know get involved in this industry and do you have any advice to someone that's thinking about well maybe I should get into user experience because it does sound like from your experience not to use that word too many times but you've found value in constantly trying to evaluate how others are creating that best, um, I'm trying not to use the word experience, best way to present a product in front of someone. Yeah, so it's it's more than presenting the product. It's it's about getting the outcome, right? The 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 work that we do focuses on this idea that that we're we're trying to improve people's lives when we deliver a product or a service, the goal for that product or service is to improve the, the user's life over what they would have had if we didn't give them this product or service, if they use somebody else's or they didn't use anybody's, right? If it's not an improvement, why would they, why would they give it us you know, the money for it? Why would, they, why would they want it? Why would they use it? And so, um, the goal isn't to deliver an experience. The goal is to improve people's lives. And we do that by designing artifacts, applications, websites, phones, cars, whatever it is, that then uh, encourage behaviors that in turn uh, are improvements over what they would have done had they not done had that thing 
And so that's, that's the, the ultimate at that level, right? Is, is that's what we're shooting to do. And in terms of, of, you know, someone who wants to get into the field. So there's getting, there's, there's thinking about how do I basically create things that improve people's lives. And then there's getting a job in the industry. And those are two very different things. You know, it's, it's like uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, being the funny person amongst all your friends versus getting a job as a comedian. There, there's, uh, those are very different uh, uh, end results. And uh, so, you know, someone who wants to create experiences can, can just start doing that in the things they control, right? You can, you can make a nice living space for your family. You can uh, uh, throw great parties. You can um, uh, build a website that has information that might be useful to other people that, that, that folks would, would love to come to. These days, there are so many tools out there that, that you can use for free or for cheap that, that really, you can pretty much do anything you want at some level. Getting someone to pay you for it, that's a whole different ballgame because that involves marketing and sales and all sorts of other things if you're going to do it on your own or it involves working in a company where there are expectations and demands and they expect to have a level. It's you know sort of like I can cook a nice meal for you and, and you might enjoy it or I can open a restaurant. Those are two different levels of experience, right? Or I can go work in a restaurant. You know, I can go go work as a chef somewhere. Um, and so uh, the, the first thing is, it is, you know, people who don't like to cook shouldn't become chefs. So we know that. So at some point, you have to have a passion for the cooking. Uh, uh, otherwise, this is probably not the right thing. So, you, so to become someone in the UX world, you, you have to have a passion for delivering user experiences that people like. And, and so that's key. But the, the, the second piece of it is, is then you have to learn the craft. And right now, there's a fair amount of craft to learn. So it takes a while to learn and master the craft. And the, the expectations are fairly high amongst people who are hiring because there recently have been a lot of people who've paid various institutions a few thousand dollars and taken some short courses and, and, and now claim that they know the craft. And the reality is, is that they don't really. And they're not, they're not in a place where, where a manager can put them on the work and um, uh, see the results. And that's problematic because if the manager can't um, uh, put them on the work, uh, uh, you know, it's like having someone in your kitchen who just can't make the dishes the customers are ordering. It's just, it's just not helpful. And so uh, so they, they, that, that's a fair amount of work right now. And the, the bar is pretty high on that. So doesn't mean you shouldn't try. You just need the expectation that it's going to take a while to get to that point where you're recognized as someone who can, who can do the work professionally. Yeah, that's great. I, you know, when you talk about stand-up comedy, over the summer, I finished a book called The Art and Zen of Stand-Up Comedy. And basically the book hit spot on. It said, it's gonna take about 10 years for you to actually become a professional comic. It just doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. You really have to try all these things. And I love that analogy and same with you know cooking is you first gotta have the passion and then it, and there's a lot of rigor then that's involved after that to really acclimate to understanding the craft. Well, there are levels, right? To become a professional comic, you just got to get someone to pay you to, to tell jokes or write jokes, whichever. But, uh, 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 but you only have to do that once. And then you're officially a professional comic for the rest of your life. Uh, if you want to make a living at it, that's a completely different level. 
right? Yeah. This is this is where the the line "Don't quit your day job" comes from, because uh, 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 you know there's an old joke which is, uh, uh, "What do you say the to the professional comedian who who uh, um, who comes to your door?" And the answer is, uh, "Yeah, you know, how much for the pizza?" <laughs> uh you know it's it's um uh uh it really is a uh it's a hard job to to get right now that's the reality of it that could change in a bit it was easier i would say about four years ago because there were the the ux the need for ux professionals was growing at a rate faster than um, people could uh, fill the positions. But with COVID, a lot of folks went home and fired up their, their online education apps and started taking education and got certificates. And so now the, mar the, the, the marketplace is sort of flush with um, all these people who are, um, uh, uh, struggling uh, to to land jobs mm -hmm. because you know to go back to the cooking analogy, they can make a dish at home, but they're not prepared to work in the kitchen and and a professional kitchen. And so there's a jump there. There's a leap. And, and this is something the whole industry is dealing with because we have to help, you know, we need people, there's no doubt about it, but we, we need people who can do the work. So we have to help with that leap. And that's, that's right now, one of the biggest challenges we face. Well, Jared, it's been a pleasure catching up with you. Thank you so much for just sharing your story and really shedding a light on how someone can get into UX and then also what it really takes you know it sounds like there's a you know a lot of curiosity and a lot that you've done in your career so thank you so much oh you're welcome it's my pleasure thanks for encouraging my behavior <laughs> well once again thank you and excited to share your story